Hello and welcome to the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, uh, November the 6th. Today we'll be celebrating also the baptism of Ruby June Henline on our Sunday morning worship. But for the moment, Annie, can you begin us with uh, announcements? Good morning. Rick and Lisa Meyer's anniversary will be on the 11th, and we have birthdays for Ellen Birchenstein on the 9th and Cameron Sundemeyer on the 14th. Going on with our announcements, please keep in your prayers the list of people that is in your bulletin. I remind you every week if you have someone to add, please call Marsha. And if there's someone that needs to be taken off, you can give her that information as well. We begin by asking uh, that you pray for the victims of uh, all the hurricanes, wildfires, and other nat natural dis uh, disasters that are occurring throughout our world. Please pray for the people. We ask that you pray for our leaders and citizens of our country for wisdom and understanding as we continue to deal with the coronavirus, civil unrest, and our election results. Parents and teachers and students, hey there. We're still hoping that things are going well for you in school this year. We think of you often and pray that you're learning uh, absolutely wonderful things and that everything's going to be going okay for you. We ask for special prayers for our military personnel and their loved ones, and as always, we first thank them for their service and let them know that they're in our hearts and in our prayers. Today we will be celebrating the baptism of Ruby June Henline. Ruby's parents are Ryan and Cindy, Big brothers are Carlson and Langston. The grandparents are Roger and Barb Bostorf. Christy Miller and Holly will be, who are Ruby's aunts, uh, will be your sponsors. Congratulations to your family. Pastor asks that we announce that the Red Cross is holding a blood drive at the Lucky uh, Union Le Legion Hall actually and it's going to be on the 23rd from 1 to 6. Please remember you need to call and schedule an appointment. It's not like the old days where you can just show up. So that number is listed in our bulletin. We're actively continuing looking for candidates for council for 2021. A special uh, announcement was for everyone to please be prayerful and consider helping out if perhaps you get a call from one of us to volunteer or whatever. The vacancies to fill 2021 uh, include a vice president, secretary, assistant treasurer, a junior elder, and two trustees. Please join me every day in special prayers that six people out of our body of Christ will come forward and kind of fill in those spots for us. We will be so grateful if that could happen. Our October to December portals of prayer, again, are available, and they're on the outside of the main entrance of the church. They usually sit on top of the blue mask bucket, and they're right next to uh, our wonderful copies of the November newsletter that Marcia just finished up for us as we're looking forward to reading it and also send out a real, hey girl, you're doing a great job on those newsletters. We really like them. With that being said, if you have any announcements that you would like, please call Marcia and let her know. I love to yak before we start the service, so let me know and I'll be glad to uh, do and announce whatever you need. Um, Let's begin. In our introduction, today the prophet Amos calls for justice to roll down like waters. Paul urges us to encourage one another with promise coming from the Lord. Jesus tells the parable today of the wise and foolish bridesmaids 
and surrounded by faithful of every time and place, we celebrate Christ's coming in our midst in the world of life and feast of victory and the marriage feast of the Lamb. So let's begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we, we confess, confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in asking your gifts and using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. By Jesus, we are welcome, and in Jesus, we are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Ghost be with you all. And also with you. Now let us pray together. O God, o God of, of justice, justice and, and love, love, you are illumine our way, way through life, with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We begin, God speaks to us in spiritual readings, preachings, and songs. And our first reading today comes from Amos, the fifth chapter. Our introduction tells us in the days of Amos, People thought that the day of the Lord would be a time of great victory, but Amos announced that it would be a day of darkness, not light. He said the liturgy is no substitute for obedience. The Lord demands justice and righteousness in the community. And now we begin our reading. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested his hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them, says the Lord. And the offerings of well-being from your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like water, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. We continue with Psalm 70, and I invite you to read it with me by verse. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confounded. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Aha! and gloat over me turn back because of their shame. Let those who seek your justice and be glad with you let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Our second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, the first chapter, or the fourth chapter. We know that some in this reading are worried that the dead Christians will be excluded from the resurrection to eternal life when Christ comes again. Paul assures them with the word of hope that all Christians, 
living or dead, will be raised into everlasting life with Christ. And so we begin our reading. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do, who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpets, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We hear our gospel reading from Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And in the introduction, the gospel tells us that Jesus tells us parables about his own second coming, emphasizing the need for readiness at all times. And now the reading. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to greet him. And all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and buy some for yourself. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know not whether the day or the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. I think the theme of this lesson is summed up simply in the terms, be prepared. Or as... Uh, a leader I once had used to say, the key is preparation, so be sure to preparate. Yeah. So it's for him. In our gospel lesson, Jesus reckons it to be something like a wedding. And there are bridesmaids, and their job is pretty simple. You gotta have a lamp, you need some oil. When the bridegroom shows up, you trim the wick so you get a good burn and you light the lamp. And you stand there with the thing in the air so that the bridegroom and bride can go from the road into the banquet hall. Sort of a processional thing. The trouble is, half of them forgot to bring the oil. They didn't prepare well. And so when the time came, you know, it was quick, give us some of your oil. No, 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 I don't have enough, and besides, if we try to pour it out of my lamp now, it'll be all over my dress, and I'll smell, and you go down the road and get to your own. And so they ran down the road, thinking for sure, oh, we can get back before he shows up, but they're just barely around the corner, and here comes the bridegroom. And he's upset. Where's all the rest of the bridegroom? Maids? They're supposed to be here to honor my bride and me. Well, we're going to have a wedding. Come on in, we'll close the doors. They can't be here when I come. They're not getting in. Wow. Rough one. We've seen over the years 
this idea that Christ as the bridegroom is representing his marriage to the church on earth, that is, the body of Christ, you and I. And so, as Christ is reunited, he wants everyone to be prepared and ready for that reunion. In general, I think we tend to see life as being a little bit like a journey. It begins at birth. We travel through life as a Christian. And at some point, we either die, which is normal, in which case our soul goes to heaven and awaits the second coming of Christ when he will return and awaken all the people that are buried, bringing them back to life to resume this kingdom of heaven and earth united. Hmm. Generally speaking, though, I don't think we expect Christ to return tomorrow or the next day or the next. With over 2,000 years of data, I think we can say that statistically we're pretty safe. The one thing wrong with statistics is that <laughs> there's no guarantee that he won't be back tomorrow. And so we have to ask ourselves, how do I prepare myself for that coming? What do I have to do? A good number of people like the people in Amos' time. People who had separated from the people in Jerusalem. People who had said, we're going to start our own little Israeli nation, and we're going to start worshiping Egyptian gods, and we're going to do things our way, and we're going to have fancy ceremonies, and great music, and we're going to do all kinds of cool things. And Amos says, that isn't what God wants. You're not pleasing God. In the same way, today, I think there's a number of Christians who say, Look, I'm here in church. We're not doing a lot of singing these days, but hey, I'm praying along with you guys, and I'll probably be back for Christmas, whatever that'll look like. Yeah, I'm prepared. No, I don't think so. The whole key to this preparing yourself for the coming of the Lord that everyday activity where you make sure that you're ready if Jesus does show up has to do with this statement about let justice roll. Let righteousness abound. Sadly, again, we, we tend to think of justice as being something that the media shows us where somebody goes to the courts and says, I want you to make him give me some of his so that I can have the same thing, and that's what I call justice. But that's not really the case at all. Justice is simply doing what is right. Christ says, love God, love one another. And if you truly love someone, you're going to do what's right with them. And so this whole business of a journey through life is a journey of constantly preparing ourselves for the return of Christ. As an example, this Sunday morning, we're going to have two very proud parents bring this beautiful infant up and start her journey through life as a Christian, through baptism. As she grows, the baptism lines say, put in her hands the scripture, teach her to pray and pray the Lord's Prayer. Bring her to church and to Sunday school, and eventually we'll confirm her. And then, as Proverbs would tell us, raising up a child in the way he will go means that when he gets older, he won't depart from that training. And that's what we hope for all people. That the things we learned as children about righteousness and justice, about loving and caring for our neighbors and doing what's right by them, will be the preparation we have every day for this coming of Christ. I think the last part of this is every day we need trust. Trust that this coming of Christ will occur. And I think most people believe that. Although there are some people who become angry with God and say, I want nothing to do with him. But my concern is even more so for the people 
who somehow feel that by my life or some event in my life, I'm no longer worthy of being with Christ or with God. Yeah, he'll come, but he won't be coming for me. But that person, we need to assure them every day, in some way or the other, that Christ and God truly love them. And that this returning of Christ is an act first of reunion, and then of forgiveness, and finally of eternal joy. And that all people who believe in God are included in this gathering. And so this week, as we think about this lesson, about being prepared, about living a life where righteousness and doing what's right and just with our neighbors and our family and even our strangers among us is what's important. And this week, what I'd like you to do is to ask yourself, how can I do what's right for the people in my family? For my friends? How can I do what's right for this community? For this congregation? The circumstances of today bring some difficult decisions for all of us. And today, maybe more than any other time, we are challenged to do what is right. So make those decisions in Jesus' name, I ask. Amen. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made for us. Bless the work of landscapers and architects, artists, and those who work invites us into a harmonious living with your creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bless and protect the caregivers and guardians of our world, the emergency workers, nurses, doctors, and therapists. Bless and protect the soldiers, police, and firefighters as well. May your love and compassion comfort and sustain them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Comfort those who struggle with illness or pain. Please be with Julie, John, Mike, Tony, Morgan, Merlin, Belinda, Steve, and John as we pray that you restore them to health and to peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy Protector, be with all that observe Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Hear us, O God. We know your mercy is great. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and the shortness of our own lives, and please inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We give thanks to all those who continue to support this ministry here at Zion with their gifts and offerings and with their skills and prayers. Thank you so much for all that you do. Let us pray. 
God of goodness and growth. All creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread. These are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we may proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive this benediction. Caring and compassionate God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, bless you and lead you into ways of truth and life, now and forever. Amen. We repeat together our mission statement most gratefully, connecting Christ, connecting to Christ, connecting to one another, connecting Christ to the community and to the world. So be safe, love one another, and enjoy all the blessings that God brings into your life every day. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.